1971-72. Uh, I got a small shop in Salem, Oregon, with stone building, with a small outbuilding, and uh, was in the uh, retail business selling saddles. And I was, I was showing quite a bit, doing very well back in those days, so they listened to me. And we worked, started working with trainers and their, and their people and got things made. And then, a fellow that owned a, something called the Purple Pony Shop in Salem, Oregon, Ed Kettner, bless his soul, one-legged guy, peg leg. But he was very good when it came to fixing things. And my best friend in the whole world at that time is Paul White, and he's still one of the best friends I've ever had. And Paul was hurt uh, running wild horses in Eastern Oregon in the desert. Horse dumped him in a pile of rocks and they all thought he was dead, so they went on. And he managed to crawl to the road and somebody drove him into town, refused to go to the doctor. And he got a bad, bad case of arthritis, couldn't make a living as a cowboy anymore. And uh, but he sure knew what he was doing, you know. And uh, he came to me and said, you know, I'd like to fix and repair stuff if I could. Maybe even make some things. I asked him, I said, you got any experience? He says, oh yeah, I can do it. Never done it before in his life. And I said, okay, so I, I, I hired him. And then uh, Ed Kettner came to me and said he wanted to sell the Purple Pony Shop, but I'd be interested in buying it. Lock, stock, and barrel, machine, the equipment, the mach uh, tools, everything. And I said, yeah, uh, but only if you do this. Charlie wanted 10000 for the whole thing. He said, only if you do, I asked, I said, only if you do this, if you'll take Paul White over there for a few weeks and teach him how to run the machines, <laughs> how to cut a piece of leather, you know. And uh, I didn't tell Paul that I needed him to learn how to work on leather. I told him that he needed to go over there and learn how to use those machines before we brought everything over to my place. And that's how we got started. We made uh, logging harness. Made all kinds of strap goods, head stalls and halters and that sort of thing. We reconditioned a lot of saddles and Paul finally made a saddle. Uh, he had a friend of his named Frank Crail who's long since passed away. Great, great, great saddle maker in his day. And Paul learned what he knew from him. Paul died two or three years ago. And uh, he's, well, once again, he's an exceptional, exceptional human being. Uh, he went in and had both his hip joints fixed and because he couldn't walk. He was taking a bath in DMSO. Nobody knew it. He, we watched him go by the shop one time, me and another guy, Ron, Ron Barker. And here comes Paul, and he had a little dog named Yogi. And Yogi was a little cow dog, and Yogi would sit up in the front seat. And here comes Paul, and he's all bent over, and he's got his truck, and he's going down the road. And he goes right on by, and he keeps on going down the road. Couldn't figure out what the hell he was doing. You know, it's, it's amazing. And after a while, he comes back real, real slow. And then he pulls into the parking lot. And I asked him, I said, Paul, what happened? He says, he says, I couldn't reach the damn brake. I said, jeez. He you know, sitting there, nerd crazy. But he was, he, he got both hips fixed. And within a year after that, we were riding stirrup to stirrup in the desert, you know, and he was in great shape. We had a good time with it. Uh, he was Mormon, and he'd take baths out there in those ice flumes. Uh, with had the Mormon you know, outfit that they wear, you know, underneath their clothing. And uh, I don't know how he did that, freeze to death out there. But he, was, he was a cowboy, and he was a good one, a good human being, but that's how everything started, and that's when it started.